Welcome to Access Africa, the show that takes you, the business viewer, into the heart of the African continent. Starting off in South Africa, we bring you business stories that highlight challenges as well as successes. Journey with us into Nigeria, Cameroon, Ethiopia and Kenya as we focus on how business is done in Africa. Vision partnerships and endurance. These are some of the elements used to lay the foundation upon which the solid Tiger Brands empire now stands. My name is Prue Jinka and you're watching Access Africa. In this episode, we look at the humble beginnings of a South African company, one of the most admired, fast-moving consumer goods companies in the world's most promising emerging markets. It all began in 1894, when John Collier bought Union Flour Mills in Cape Town. This eventually became Tiger Oats in 1924. At around the same time, Jacob Frankel started a modest produce concern in Newtown, Johannesburg. And on the 8th of November, 1944, the shares of the Tiger Oats Milling Company were quoted in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange for the first time. Whilst the business has evolved rapidly over the years, they have somehow managed to maintain the one element which lays at their foundation, which is that Tiger Brands will never stop adding value to life. We speak to Peter Matlari, the CEO, about this. Peter, please tell us about the Tiger Brands founding fathers. Tiger has been made up of a number of great brands or businesses that were originally started by some extraordinary entrepreneurs who early in the 19th century and into the 20th century created these great businesses which Tiger over time acquired. So if you were to talk about that DNA, that the essence of that DNA, it has two parts to it as far as I'm concerned. One, an entrepreneurial um, zeal or DNA that drives uh, looking for opportunity and the other is an absolute focus on producing quality products because those quality products that you have become our brands have truly remained at the apex of their markets because of the quality of those products. Now that must go back to what the founders of the various businesses that eventually became Tiger Brands. So whether it's Tastic Rice or it's Beacon Chocolates, the very founders of those businesses are the people that gave this DNA, these great brands, and therefore, uh, for us, great brands, great people, great products, that's where it all comes from. Starting a business from scratch must be a daunting challenge. What obstacles do you think they faced? Ooh, I can only but guess. Those family businesses operated in markets that were completely unstructured, differently regulated, and therefore there had to be people who had resilience, um, who had tenacity, who understood their customers and wanted to serve their customers um, within the context of those periods when these businesses were founded. So it's very different from, in many ways, launching a brand or a product today. We've got loads of market research and insights that we use, and it's essential for the way we run our businesses. But when they started, um, I can't help thinking that in some of those great minds, there was just a gut feel, or when they got knocked backwards, just that ten tenacity to get up again. Um, and that's what allowed them to create these great businesses over time. Peter, where does Tiger Brand stand today? Um, we never stand. We're, we're always on the move. Um, you know, one of the themes 
that, that, that lives with me now is something I now call better than. We have to be better than we were yesterday, better than people thought we would be, better than anyone dreamt it was possible. Um, and it's not better in an arrogant sense. It's better as in continuing to strive for excellence in everything that we do. So where do we stand today? We stand as a company that has great people, great brands, that's developing great partnerships in one of the most turbulent economic periods the world has ever seen with a complete belief that we have the people and the products that will help us get through this phase of our growth into the next phase of our growth. What are the unique FMCG challenges? It's not that they're unique, you know, if you look at where we play, where we operate, um, we ultimately look to service my mum, your mum, my aunt, your aunt, rational people who want to buy great products for good value. So the challenge is to ensure that we can deliver that. But it's a challenge in a market that has a lot of turbulence, whether it's currency enabled, uh, whether it's soft commodity enabled, the oil price having done what it's done recently has a huge impact on how we begin to think about where the business is and where it's going. I think they're the general challenges of business uh, across the piece. Um, more competition, lots of discontinuities, has the mindset of the consumer changed? As the world changes, as consumers get to understand more, as consumers have greater choice, they will always demand different and hopefully better. So whether it's to do with the quality of the product, whether it's to do with the impact of your business or those products on the environment, um, all of these things have made the consumer a lot more savvy and a lot more demanding. You know, the great thing, for example, about social media is that you will know immediately if a consumer is unhappy with your product. You no longer have to wait for someone to write a Dear John letter to the chief executive. On social media, that will happen virtually in real time. And unless you're able to tap into understanding that response from that consumer, your brand can take a huge amount of damage. From visionaries and great leaders came the foundations of what is Tiger Brands today. Rooted in consumer needs, products were born that still exist. Remaining relevant and alive to the consumer, this bears testimony to a desire to continue to grow. Over time, the manufacturing processes have developed to deliver best quality at world-class standards. Focused on both corporate and social responsibility, this is a company committed to sustainability. Delivering brands that are loved and trusted through the decades. Tiger Brands thanks you, South Africa, for voting our brands your favorites. So buy smart with Tiger Brands. I'll always buy black and peanut butter. Black cake, definitely. Chunky and oh, I love the taste of it. Fantastic, I like the quality of it. Sure, it's tasty. It's tasty, fantastic. Cool baked beans are definitely the best. You can taste the difference. I'm Italian and that's why I buy fatties and monies. Thumbs up for all gold, tomato sauce. I enjoy Aras a lot. It makes me feel like a kid again. I choose Enterprise because it's the best. Quality is 100%. Eh? Tiger Brands is the owner of many leading brands, brands that occupy first and second position in their categories. We speak to Brenda Kornieff about the company's marketing strategy. Brenda, what are the basics of the Tiger Brands marketing strategy? Big question, Prue. Um, but really, I would say to you that everything we do for every one of our brands is to start with a consumer. So, understanding what the consumer wants, understanding their lifestyles, their very deepest desires. That's what I call getting that real consumer insight right. Brenda, what makes Tiger Brand such a unique, fast-moving consumer goods company? Tiger really is quite a unique FMCG company. Um, firstly, because of the breadth of our basket. We produce from baby foods, 
all the way through to maize, all the way through to personal or home care products. So we have such a wide, wide basket of, of products. And then I think what makes us so different is the fact that we have brands that are iconic brands in each of their categories. They're the kind of brands, if you open somebody's cupboard at home, you'll find our brands in their cupboards. Um, they're part of people's homes, they're part of people's lives, and it's such a privilege to have a company like this with brands like we have. Our brands are really part of the Tiger history. So Tiger has really been built over the decades through various acquisitions. And we've always made sure that as we've been acquiring companies, we are acquiring leading brands. So most of our brands are really decades and decades old. Um, some of our brands like Cross and Black will date back to the 19th century. Most of our brands are over 100 years old. So these brands really um, are deep in people's hearts and deep in their homes. And that's something that I think sets Tiger Brands apart. Having enjoyed a great deal of success in South Africa over a long period of growth, entrenching their products in the hearts and minds of their consumer and setting the standards high, Tiger Brands began to explore new markets and new platforms for growth. Their desire to expand across the balance of the continent has taken them on a journey of discovery, learnings and new beginnings. Partnerships and acquisitions that open new opportunities, bringing some easily won successes and some challenges that will in time bear the fruit that Tiger Brands is seeking. Tiger Brands expanded into Africa in a very deliberate manner. Would you please tell us about the expansion? Look, I, I, I suppose the best way to start this is to say we are part of the African continent. So when we talk about moving into other territories around our continent, um, it's, it's, it's almost an inevitability. If you want to continue to grow, you've got to be able to find places where your products have relevance and where you can service uh, consumers and customers. So um, the, the expansion across our continent certainly didn't start with me. We had businesses in Botswana, in Zimbabwe, we've exported for a very long pe period of time and indeed many of uh, my predecessors colleagues continued to look for opportunities along the, across the continent for a period of time. We started to gather momentum, I suppose, in many respects, in sort of latter part of 2008. And since then, then we've been looking for a little more aggressively opportunities to invest in, et cetera, et cetera. So since 2008, I think we've made some significant progress. But the journey is by no means complete. I would say we are hardly a quarter of the way through this journey. Um, we now export to over 26 countries across the continent. We're in at least five other uh, geographies in terms of fixed assets. Um, and it's been a continuous learning process for us, making sure that we can bring this investment to good account. It's not been easy. Um, there have been some real bumpy rides, lots of turbulence along the way. But I'm quite confident in the quality of the people and the quality of the businesses that over time we will deliver good shareholder value. With decades of experience, Tiger Brands have proven that shared value, a common purpose and the right partner are surely key to sustained growth. What is your brand portfolio strategy as you expand into the balance of Africa? Quite an interesting strategy, I think, which is quite significantly different from most of the other um, global multinationals who've moved into Africa um, searching for business opportunities. Um, so the way that we've approached things is that 
where we've made acquisitions where the operating company owns leading brands of their own, we would actually cultivate and nurture those brands because we believe that they are part of the fabric of that particular country. So we will retain the local brands. Where it's possible, we'll expand those brands regionally. So whether it's across West Africa or Central Africa or East Africa or Southern Africa, we have a range of brands which then is expanded as a regional brand because of its relevance in that particular geography. And then overlaid on top of that, we would have what we term our core or global brands, which are those brands which we believe can travel right across the Pan-African region. And we have a number of really exciting brands, which we found has real relevance and ability to succeed in a number of different geographies. So, for example, we have taken our Tastic brand, which is one of our decades-old brands in South Africa. Its promise is, cooks perfectly every time. And we found that that resonates in East Africa, where we have launched uh, Tastic Pasta. We found that it resonates in Central Africa, where we have launched Tastic um, Rice and Tastic Pasta. So that's an example of a Pan-African brand. Um, but I was hastened to say that not all of our pa Pan-African brands are South African, because we found that some of our brands from our operating companies in the rest of Africa have got amazing legs. And what is so wonderful is as we expand through Africa is to really prove that basic human truths never change. So what is true for the consumer in South Africa, we also find that that remains completely true, whether you're in Nigeria or Kenya or Ethiopia or Lesotho. So that's what makes our brands able to travel across the continent. But of course, every country in Africa is different. So you can't just assume that it will work exactly as is. So you've got to understand the cultures, the traditions, the relevance of your brands in that country and adapt them to make sure that people feel as though they are meant for themselves particularly. But what is very interesting is that because the routes to market are so very different and your media channels in each country are so very different in terms of their reach and impact that they're able to deliver, we do actually find that in the rest of Africa, we use a lot more direct marketing, a lot more below the line marketing, a lot more sampling, a lot more activation in the stores um, around where people are shopping. So there definitely are different ways in which we would activate and promote products across the continent. Tiger Brands Africa expansion has been truly phenomenal. Up next, we speak to Neil Brimacombe about Tiger Brand's African vision. Neil, why Africa? Well, the first reason is South Africa is part of the African continent. So to the extent that we know something about the territory and feel comfortable with the territory, uh, which, let's be honest, has a very significant mix of first and, uh, and third world, um, and how that plays itself out is obviously a mix of formal retail and, of course, undeveloped trade. Um, the second part is we have a number of product categories and brands which we believe to resonate uh, with a lot of the consumers uh, in the countries north of our borders. Thirdly, we're a reasonably successful organization within the South African confines and as a consequence have a number of disciplines um, and what we call exportable competencies uh, which we've taken into the balance of the continent. So it was a combination of those factors. And of course, as you know, success does breed success. And in some of the countries that we first started with, where we did enjoy some success, that gave us, I suppose, two things, confidence and the license 
to go and do more. What has been the most challenging aspect of growing the business in the balance of the continent? One of the most significant challenges that we faced um, when going into the balance of the continent um, was the preconception that Africa as a continent is one country, when further from the truth it couldn't be in you know, in the respects that it's a combination of 47 countries uh, and when one adds the islands um, adjacent to our continent to that, it takes it to 53 and each of those with uh, its own unique culture, language, macroeconomic, political um, challenges, um, consumer taste preferences, habits, attitudes and the like. So from the perspective that says how we cherry pick the categories and the brands uh, certainly a number of variables to contemplate and far more complex uh, than we perhaps had initially um, assumed. Secondly, um, if one considers the average income um, of consumers by country, certainly they would be at the lower spectrum relative to international standards. And interestingly enough, uh, that doesn't, low income does not mean brand conscious or brand aspirational on the contrary. Rather, it's about uh, how we then take those aspirations into a branded proposition and that's affordable. So, consequently, price, point, pack size, format, expression were significant learnings uh, right up front. And then pre picking up on the issue of quality, which is really paramount um, you know, to, to us as a, as a branded consumer organisation. You know, the principle behind that relates to the level of income, where, as a general rule, um, consumers in the balance of the continent do not necessarily have the level of income to experiment across different product offerings. So therefore, um, the promise which we uh, attach to our brand must be a promise uh, that actually delivers so that we don't disappoint given their lack of ability to, uh, to switch in the event that the, uh, the quality disappoints. Having made this decision to expand into Africa, how do you find the right partnerships and the right relationships in order to execute your drive? So, Pru, as we've ventured into the rest of the con continent, um, the concept of relationship has been something which we probably underestimated in the, in the first instance. What do I mean by that? Um, trust. Um, so we've spent an, probably an inordinate amount of time, uh, particularly with our um, shareholders in the rest of the, of the continent um, and prospective shareholders, uh, precisely and trying to understand each other's needs and looking for like-minded uh, business people, whether that be relating to investment, um, how we take innovation to market, our route to market thinking, some of the governance standards, or a combination thereof. And then more importantly, actually listening and really, really valuing that partnership to the extent that they add a significant uh, level of value. And certainly in the, uh, in the countries that we have competed in, uh, it's been probably the single biggest lesson that I could really, really pass on to anybody wishing to venture into the into balance of the continent. So look, I, I always say that um, for myself and my executive team, we are custodians of Tiger's next five or 10 years. Um, and as custodians, A, we've got to make sure we bring what we have today to good account, so we don't mess it up or destroy value. But more importantly, we have to build new platforms that will allow Tiger to continue to grow. So on our continent, we've clearly said, we want to be the leading FMCG player on this continent. And that means a lot to us because it's going up against some of the great corporations of the world. Beyond that, we've also said we'd like to move into other emerging markets where we would also play a meaningful role as one of the leading FMCG companies over time. Now, my responsibility with my team at the moment is to build the platform that allows us to systematically grow and grow shareholder value across this continent over the next five and 10 years. And to ensure that when we hand over to the next set of leaders, they're able to build on what we have done rather than having to get rid of what we've done. As a company grows, it is always good to look at how and where it all started, an exercise that can only result in refining the vision for the future. 
from me, Prue Jinker. Goodbye.